Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shug Mohammed. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa visited today the General Command of the Bahrain Defense Force. Upon arrival, His Majesty was received by the BDF Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed, the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed al-Jalohma, and the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar al-Naimi. During his meeting with senior officers, His Majesty commended the programs and future plans of the General Command to provide the units of the BDF with the latest military systems to increase their ability to perform their duties. His Majesty also praised an advanced level of practical and scientific training. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the BDF Commander-in-Chief for his continuous efforts of development. The Bahrain Royal Air Force Commander briefed His Majesty on the orientation program for Air Force officers to participate in the space flight with Russian space astronauts at the Russian International Space Station. The Commander stressed that the Bahraini pilots are eager to participate in the space trip. His Majesty the King valued the move, which he said is within the framework of cooperation between the two friendly countries. He congratulated the graduates of the 12th batch of officer cadets of Ahmed al fatih Brigade, whose graduation ceremony was held under the patronage of His Majesty the King at the Isa Military College. His Majesty hailed the level of graduates, wishing them further success in serving their country. He voiced the pride in the BDF's brave personnel, wishing their military contributions aimed at serving the homeland, citing their courageous participation in the Saudi-led operation, restoring hope in Yemen, in defense of justice, and in order to support the delivery of humanitarian relief to the brotherly Yemeni citizens. His Majesty the King wished all BDF affiliates a blessed year.
personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and Chairman of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, achieved the first title in the King Abdulaziz Kamel Festival in the individual Kamel race. His Highness's achievement contributes to the accomplishments of the kingdom after a strong competition among GCC participants. The festival is held under the patronage of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman ibn Abdulaziz Al Saud, and is one of the most important festivals showcasing camels, tradition, and heritage. His Highness Sheikh Nasser congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the occasion and expressed hope to achieve more significant results in the future. He added that this achievement is thanks to the support of His Majesty the King and his keenness to support Bahraini heritage and that camels represent an important part of Bahraini tradition. His Highness also said that the support of the custodian of the two holy mosques to the festival motivated the GCC countries to preserve this tradition as it is a huge part of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's history as well as other GCC countries. His Highness Sheikh Nasser said the festival attracted a strong competition in addition to showcasing the sport as a historic icon practiced by Bahrain and the GCC countries. Speaker of the Representatives Council Ahmed Al Mullah chaired today the weekly meeting and approved to prepare a reply to the royal speech of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa that he delivered during the inauguration of the new session of the National Assembly. The Council approved amending Topic 34 of Law of Proceedings before the Sharia Courts. The Council also approved a proposal regarding raising the age of the beneficiary from 35 to 45 years in the program of social housing Mizaya and another proposal regarding the government stopping the dismissal of Bahraini workers from the Arab shipbuilding and repair yard. The Council then approved to issue a statement regarding the need to respect all religions, beliefs and doctrines in the Kingdom. The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended the concluding ceremony of the Coast Guard Exercise Vigilant Guard 6. Forces from the Special Security Force, Police Air Force, and General Directorate of Criminal Investigations and Forensic Evidence took part in the exercise. The Commander of the Coast Guard, Rear Admiral Ala Siyadi, delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks and appreciation to the Minister of Interior of his patronage of the event, noting his continued support to develop all units of the ministry. The minister was briefed on the exercise goals, execution stages and the security forces capabilities to work together while carrying out security duties to protect sensitive facilities and responding to smuggling and infiltration operations. The minister lauded the coordination and high-level professionalism and readiness demonstrated by the participants, noting the importance of holding training exercises to gain new field experiences and improving planning skills. The Public Security Chief Major General Tariq bin Hassan Al Hassan highlighted the Interior Minister's keenness on following up training programs that reflect the Ministry's strategy to constantly raise readiness and competence level. Under the patronage of the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Naimi, the Arabian Gulf University held its first contract signing ceremony of King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Medical City in Bahrain in the presence of the Ambassador of Saudi Arabia to Bahrain, Dr. Abdullah bin Abdul Malik Al Sheikh. 
the chairman of AGU, Dr. Khalid Abdurrahman al Ohali, and a number of officials. On this occasion, the minister affirmed that this day, which represents the beginning of this major health and educational project, represents the deep-rooted historic relations of brotherhood between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. The project will be built with a generous donation of the late custodian of the two holy mosques, King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, on a land allocated by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, with a total area of 1 million square meters. The minister hailed the keenness of the custodian of the two holy mosques on establishing this advanced medical project. Then Aimi continued by saying the medical city will become a substantial addition to the facilities of AGU and will contribute to developing the educational and medical services provided to the people of Bahrain and the Gulf. In its preliminary phase, the project will contain 300 beds. It will also contain clinical research centers to address the health issues prevailing in the Gulf, such as diabetes, obesity, cancer, and heart diseases. Over 100 experts participated in the inception of the project. The education minister stated that Bahrain, through the directives of the leadership, will continue to provide support to the construction of the King Abdullah Medical City. For his part, al Ohali delivered a speech in which he stated that the first phase of the project is expected to be completed in 2019 in the Southern Governorate. The city will have 15 operation rooms, advanced labs and pharmacies. He noted that in cooperation with the Supreme Council for Health, the services of King Abdullah Medical City will be covered by health insurance in the kingdom. A short film about the services of the city was screened during the ceremony. In light of the Kingdom of Bahrain's fast growth in many sectors under the safety and stability provided to the citizens and residents by the Kingdom's wise leadership, the health sector today has added another achievement to its long list of prosperous ones. As the chairman of the Arab Gulf University in the presence of the ambassador of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and other dignitaries signed the first construction contract for the construction of the King Abdullah Medical City. Signed the first contract for building uh, King Abdullah Medical Academic Medical City, uh, which is uh, composed of a hospital of about 300,000 beds and includes uh, uh, a complex for outpatients and includes also a complex for uh, health services supporting the hospital. Also it will include the uh, uh, college for medical school where our students will be inshallah studying there at the uh, site. Uh, the uh, uh, medical city uh, is made and uh, created to uh, support and provide health services uh, to the population of Bahrain and also to the population of the uh, Gulf Cooperation Council countries. The construction for the medical city will take uh, around two years. We just started, alhamdulillah, January, uh, beginning of January, first week of January, and we expect to finish from the medical city and get into operation and commissioning by the end of 2019, and inshallah, not later than the first quarter in 2020. The King Abdullah Medical City will be providing different medical services and employing the best medical staff to provide these services. The uh, medical city also will be uh, a place for all GCC nationals. We expect to uh, hire uh, 1,200. Uh, that include uh, doctors, paramedics, and uh, admin uh, employees. The doctors will be around uh, between 200 to 300 doctors, inshallah ta'ala. And uh, we depend on our uh, GCC nationals first. Uh, those especially who, who attend the high uh, quality ed education to provide them with a place uh, for their aspiration and to help the, uh, and serve their countries, the GCC, altogether. Cooperations with international institutions have also been signed and been prepared. As for the employment options introduced by the medical city, they lay in the range of 1,200 healthcare professional jobs for all Gulf citizens first and foremost. We already have cooperations on many levels. We have cooperations uh, with doctors, visiting doctors coming uh, on occasions for one week or to, to, to see a group of, of, of patients. We are cooperating with hospitals for consultations. We send them uh, you know, our uh, uh, records and reports for consultation. They ask us also for consultation. 
and we are cooperating with the with the research uh, uh, institutions now we are uh, cooperating with institution in Sweden on uh, clinical research addressing the sickle cell disease we are cooperating uh, planning to cooperate with other pharmaceutical com companies on uh, pharmaceutical and uh, clinical uh, research so alhamdulillah we are building a lot of steps into the cooperation, which is uh, very important. We believe we cannot progress without uh, uh, cooperating with our partners internationally, regionally, and locally here. This is Sarah Al-Break reporting for Bahrain International.